Action, very clean fight. Una pelea muy limpia. Check your hand and good luck for los dos. And they good luck for results, says the Mexican goals. referee. He wants a good, clean fight. And I hope he's right. The judges come from Denmark and Canada. Should it go the scheduled 15 rounds, all three score. And incidentally, the three knockdown in one round rule is in effect. So if one boxer goes down three times, the referee automatically stops the contest. 40 seconds. So there you are then in the unearthly hour of mid-morning. I'm not sure how these fellas' metabolism will react to this. I know certainly from the safe side of the ropes, mine is in total confusion. Fully Obel has fought in this ring, in this theatre in San Remo, which really is a bit of a spruced up flea pit, to be honest. They fought before in Boston in 81. And Obel was stopped in eight rounds, but he blamed lack of road work for that, apart from the punches on the chin that he took from Hagler. Remember that Hagler has only had less than one round's action in 12 months. He defended against Caveman Lee, and he's had uh, dented ribs in a training injury. Very slippery canvas, I'm concerned about that because this ring's pitched on a stage of this theatre and uh, some of the preliminaries of the fault in the early hours of the morning have actually slipped through it. <laughs> oh, what a lo looping punch and it did catch the foul-proof protector of Hagler but he was concentrating too much to moan about that. Obel doing well at the start. He's a very capable boxer. I've seen him three times now in Italy. And lost only one contest of 39, the Venezuelan. It was inevitable that Hagler would have a bit of trouble finding range after being out like that. Exceptionally long reach, both of them, for middleweights. It's 11 stone, 6 division. So, a good round, I would have thought there. Look at the flash start of the number one contender, Tony Simpson. It was quite a start there by Fulio. A very good start, yeah. It was uh, very exciting. Fliobo come out there very confident, and um, he just showing it at the end of the belt there, waving a the tagler. So round two then, and the world champion's handler saying, get that first round out of your system, and needs to get some rhythm into his punches. He doesn't look as formidable there as he did when he dethroned Alan Minter at Wembley. And that was uh, back in September 1980, and he's made four title defenses since then and stopped them all, including this fellow, shortened to fully Obel. Some low punches going in there, but the referees allowing it. They're, they're slipping problem again there. Hagler was insisting to me earlier that he is really 28 and has a birth certificate to prove it, not 30, as put in the record books, because he said he cheated when he was an amateur to start earlier. Oh, well, Mayas, in fact, is uh, 29. Good right hand punch, Oval Mayas. He uses that against the southpaw stance of Hagler. Good counter. Brings it, loops it up in the old fashioned bolo cane siding stuff, they call that. It is there. There was an example there. He's very effective with that right hand. I'm amazed the way he's catching Hagler. And of course, we know that Hagler takes a good shot. 
minute to go in the second round. And the challenger going well. Oh, what a turn up for the book so far. Hagler's got to really bustle his way through this. Try and take the play away from Fulio Bell. And the shoulder went in there, so it's all in run or not. Mexican referee staying away from the action there, letting them get on with it. In the first fight, Hagler had a little bit of trouble trapping Obel, but he seemed a bit sharper in that one than he does so far. Fully Obel, 39 fights, and he's lost only one, and that was the one to Hagler. He stopped 35. He's had eight wins since he lost to Hagler and stopped them all. I think it's an impressive box. Let's have a look at the replay. Tony Simpson, let's talk us through this replay now. Um, yes, he's bowling, bowling them right hands underneath, and he's he hurt Hagler, I think, in that round, and I don't think Hagler's really in full control at this minute. So round three and a good start by the challenger no question about that There's, I don't get under any impression that uh, Hagler's trying to carry Hag Obel a bit that's not so he's taking some good shots and uh, he's going to get aggravated if this keeps up Hear the referee's instructions as plainly as the boxers, but he's carrying the microphone in his pocket. Just getting off a bit quicker now, Hagler. He's just sharpening up a bit, and he needs to. Definitely the right hand counter of Obel. That's the one that's the trouble. A minute gone then in round three. <laughs> Maybe it's the early hours of the morning that's uh, making it a bit tougher for them to get into the rhythmic stuff. needed of course that they can beam this live throughout the nation in America Hagler totally ignoring the right hand coming in from Obel by the way he's really tough around the body he's trained up at Devil's Island for many weeks he was telling me and uh, even the pilgrims gave up when they got there they changed over and went to Plymouth Rock instead Surprised how hard work really Hagler's making of this because he's allowing Obel's reach and height and movement to confuse him a little bit. I must say I was an, almost a lone voice around here when I thought Obel would probably give him more trouble than he gave him in Boston last time because he likes this environment, he's semi adopted in Italy. You can never tell with uh, Hagler's expression at all, really, what's going on. He's unbeaten for six years, 58 fights, lost only two and drawn two, and he stopped 45. 
Yeah, he's talking back to his second. Yeah. Yeah. He's getting cocky. He's getting careless. Yeah. Yeah. He's going to start slowing down Start putting the pressure on him, Alvin. He's doing a lot better. And you're booming your head nice to him, Alvin. Yeah. Keep both hands up nice and high, Alvin. So, uh, he's doing all right. Coming out too early for work for this round. Round four. Well, now let's see if the Venezuelan, unknown to quite a lot of people, fight people in the trade know him quite well. But apart from the fight with Hagler, we haven't seen much of him. And all of Hagler's title defenses have in fact been covered by ITV. He's finding this fellow a little bit different to Caveman Lee and Vito Antofermo and indeed Hamshow. Last time up. You don't get many six footers at the middleweight limit. Nobel just about tips that. Champion's corner now saying, push Obel back. Don't let him come at you. He's, he's a bit more confident. That, that right hand punch is just as well that Hagler's ignoring it. But for how long? Obel has never been 15 rounds, by the way. And Hagler, in fact, fought a 15 round draw in his first crack at the championship against Antifermo, who was subsequently beaten by Alan Minter. And he said to you, you wonder now what sort of pattern Hagler's trying to do. He seems a certain amount of frustration about him. He's getting on top just a bit now, isn't he? He's, he's much stronger inside, but he, he is allowing Obel to catch him with those dangerous uh, right, right, right by low punches. And he's, uh, he can't afford to do that because uh, you get caught on the whiskers, he likes to be turned out. Well, we'll see whose lights are going out here because the punches are getting harder in the fourth round now. I think the reconnaissance stuff is over and the battle's starting. So, this is old-fashioned pro battle, this is. See, he was all right when he was on top, Obel, but when he's under fire like this, we've got to test now the grit and the test of wills at this level, I promise you, in championship fights. This battering ram of a champion coming at you. And the crowd now really reacting because it's taken four rounds for Hagler to really start moving into top gear. We'll watch that again in replay, Tony. Um, he's starting to come on top now. And uh, his strength inside is much much more than Obel's. And um, as he backs Obel up, he's, he's, he's firing good hard punches, and it's working. Round five. And you sense that Obel saying, hello, this man means business at last. I had it good early on. But you can't write him off yet. Remember that Hagler stopped 45 opponents. Nobel hasn't fought entirely in that class, really. has stopped 35. And when Nobel seeks to grab and hold a little bit like that, you realise that he is being hurt inside. Oh, there you are. Nearly put the lights out with that swing, Hagler. Right. 
must be a demoralizing man to fight Hagler. They, Obel's thrown good right hands to the body that's knocked other people out. Hasn't made much impression on this fella. Really is built like a brick air raid shelter for a middleweight. Mind you, the fellow next to me has got enough muscles to be pushing me off the seat, Tony Sipton. This fellow's got muscles coming out of his ears, Hagler, isn't he? Hagler's not always a brawling fighter. He won the AAU championships when he was 20 at a time when Ray Leonard couldn't win them. So he knows a bit about the boxing business as well. Minute to go in the round. Good inside fighting here. They're certainly not doing too much clinching. This is the sort of fighting that suits your style, isn't it, Tony? Yes, but he's certainly breaking Nobel down now. And um, Nobel seems to weaken as soon as he takes a good shot. He just seems to um, go into his shell. But I just pile it on. Getting on top, of the first good punch he's been caught, and I'm wondering now whether he's even going to make the count. No, he isn't. The legs have buckled under him in round five. It took Hagler a while to get into his stride, and when he did, it was good night all, or in this case, good morning all. So the fifth defense of the World Boxing Association and World Boxing Council Championship, and all the supporters here of the Hagler Camp from Brockton, Massachusetts. Well pleased with their man who at least is permitting himself a smile, so he's human after all. Let's have a look now in replay, Tony. You see, by this time, Hagler's really getting on top, murdering him to the body. Look at that. Yeah. Bringing the punches down. And there goes the right hand. He showed it and landed. And he almost put his hands on the floor before he hit the canvas. And that looked about it. He was nearly, never really going to make it. So there he is going to the front of the stage of this theatre with only 2,000 people in it. 